All right. A um, couple of things. Um, as this is the last week of the semester, keep in mind there's no regularly scheduled class next week. All right, so we don't have a final in this class. Your, your final is a final project. So that is due sometime next week. Uh, the exact dates of when everything is due uh, are on Canvas. I don't, I don't remember them all. All right, so double check that. You have um, a couple things due, several, you know. Three things do, assuming that, that you're caught up. There's uh, the last assignment, uh, which is a JavaScript one, which you simply adapt one of my examples. That shouldn't be that huge of a deal. Um, there's a portfolio, the final version of that. And then there is a final project. So I hope that um, you know, if you have questions about that, you'll let me know. Uh, Wednesday will be a work day. So there'll be no lecture on Wednesday. We'll go right up the lab, and you can work uh, on your stuff. I would suggest that you bring you know, your project, your portfolio, and take that opportunity to show me and to show other people in the class uh, what you have, um, because they can provide you some good input, and you can provide good input to other people. You know, maybe you're doing something really neat on your site, and people might wonder, gee, how did they do that? You know? I can cover a lot in this class, but I can't cover everything. And, and people have discovered how to do things on their own, which are, which are awesome. Yes? Um, are all three due Wednesday? Or uh, again, the, the, the due dates are on Canvas. I don't believe that. Yeah. Yeah, I think, yeah, that makes sense. The, the lab and that uh, are due um, on, uh, uh, on Wednesday. The portfolio, again, is simply just adding links and make sure that they link back and forth. Um, and uh, I don't know, there might be a little bit more to it to, than that. But um, there's that. And then the uh, final project is due next week. If you need me, if you have questions, you can always contact me via email. And I can always arrange for times to come in. So if you're really stuck on something, you know, we can arrange a time to meet. Yes? You can add it to an old assignment, yeah. Yeah, if, if, you, uh, if there's something in an old assignment that, that, uh, that you think would benefit from having JavaScript uh, added to it, um, you're welcome to do that, absolutely. All right. Uh, that, and I'm glad you asked that question. Uh, one thing I do want to make clear is, um, there, is there, there is a difference between Java and JavaScript, all right? JavaScript is specifically, when we say the word JavaScript, we are talking about code that looks like Java, that follows the syntax of Java, that is put on web pages to do certain functionality within the browser. That's what JavaScript is. Java itself is a, a more extensive, full-blown uh, programming language. There's a lot of similarities. So what you learn in JavaScript, you'll be able to adapt uh, if you later on go and learn Java. But, but they're not identical. That's something I wanted to mention on the first day. And, and I forgot uh, to do that. But um, yeah, do keep in mind, if you're talking about the kind of code we've been looking at in this class, where it's part of the web page, it does some interactivity on the web page. It runs in the browser. You're talking about JavaScript. All right. What I want to do now today is play with some images. So let's download some images that I have. These are images that, that I myself took, so I don't have to worry about copyright.
Now, I have these images I took at the zoo, and why did I say edit with notepad plus plus? You can tell it's a Monday. Kind of a big picture of a lion. Yes, and you can't see it, of course. Well, just imagine what a lion looks like. You know what a lion looks like. It's kind of a big picture of a lion. Now, um, <coughs> I'm going to build these from scratch. I'm going to forget what I had before. All right. Now, a very common uh, sort of thing for a photo uh, gallery is to have thumbnails that you can click on or that you can mouse over, and then you can see the bigger picture underneath. All right. So that's a very, very common sort of thing um, on a web page. Um, if you're going to sketch it out, we could would sketch it out to look sort of like this. Maybe the thumbnails go like this, and the big picture is here. So maybe you click on it, or you put your mouse over uh, the, 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 the thumbnail, and then the picture here changes to a bigger version of that. And that's what I mean by a thumbnail. It's a smaller version of the picture. Now, an interesting thing about a thumbnail is you can get very creative with making the thumbnails. Um, sometimes um, people just make a smaller version of the picture as a thumbnail. And that's, that's good. That'll work. All right. But um, sometimes what you can do is instead of making merely a smaller version of the thumbnail, you can maybe crop the image and just take a part of the image and make a thumbnail from it. And that's sort of an effective thing to do as well. All right? We'll do that in one example here just to, just to show you um, how to do that. Another thing that, that I think is a good idea is to make sure that the thumbnails are consistent as far as the, the size of them goes. All right? In other words, you wouldn't want your thumbnails to look like this. And this is especially relevant if you have pictures that are in portrait mode versus landscape. So you wouldn't want some of the thumbnails to be in portrait mode and some to be in landscape. The big version of the picture is fine to, to have some, in, because you're only viewing one of those at, at, at a time. But the thumbnails, generally, you want to be the same. So what would you do if you did that? What I would suggest is to make each thumbnail the same dimensions. So maybe make them a square. Instead of being full versions of the image. And then the full uh, picture can look whatever size it actually is. So we're going to do that. And just for the heck of it, I'm going to um, edit one of these images to, to to change uh, its aspect ratio. By the way, when we talk about an image's aspect ratio, we're talking about the ratio between the height and the width. All right? And it's important to keep that con uh, constant. Uh, what I mean by that is if you're going to resize the image, make sure you resize the height and the width by the same amount, same percentage, so that you don't distort it and either stretch out the image vertically or horizontally. All right. so. I'm going to do, I'm going to practice what I preach. I'm going to make a backup of these images. It's always good to have a backup of your originals. Because if you mess them up, if you make them too small or whatever, you can't go back, right? You can't take a smaller image and make it bigger. You've already lost that extra information, all right? Therefore, have a backup of it. And if you decide if you made it too small when you edit it, you can always go back and, uh, and fix it. So I'm going to take one of these images and I'm going to crop it. Let's crop this one. So 
we'll crop this image to be a different ratio than the other one. Okay, so now I'm going to make thumbnails for each of these. All right? And I'm going to do it wrong first, and then I'll go back and do it right. All right? So, Okay, I'm realizing as we speak that I have no idea how Paint 3D works. So I'm going to try editing this in another tool. Oh, we have GIMP. GIMP is a tool called uh, the, the new GNU image manipulation program. And that one I know. All right, so we're going to open with this. Nice thing about this being open source, um, it is free. So you can download it and free. And it is professional level quality. It's not just like paint or something like that. It really is a very high quality image editor. Um, I've known professionals in the field that use GIMP instead of Photoshop, for example. Um, and the, the, the big advantage of it is it's, it's absolutely free. Um, being, I was going to say being cheap, but I'll be nice to myself and say being frugal, all right? Uh, I always look for open source alternatives first, you know? And if I don't see something, then I'll consider uh, applications that you, that you purchase. All right, this is taking a little while. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make thumbnails of each of these. And again, thumbnails, I'm going to start by making the thumbnails simply smaller versions of the main. And we'll look at that, and we'll see um, maybe what is, um, what is wrong with that approach, and then we'll correct it. All right, so here's our image. I'm going to go here, and I'm going to change the image. I'm going to change the size of the image. I'm going to scale it. And I'm going to make it, um, let's say, a quarter as big. All right, then I'm going to go and save as. And I'm going to give it the name 1T. So it's a thumbnail version of image 1. All right. I'm going to open up the second one.
and I'm going to do the same thing. Make it a quarter as big. And I'll call it 2T. And then finally, we'll open up the third one, and we'll make 3T. All right, so now let's go and make the actual web page that contains these. I'm going to again, I'm going to do the HTML first, all right? The idea being that the HTML Um, is the content of the page. So the content of this page, again, is going to be something like this, where we're going to have the thumbnails going down the side, or maybe at first going across the top, and then we're going to have the bigger image below. So I'm going to make my page Now, my thumbnails are simply a list of images, right? They're almost like a little mini navigation. So I'm going to put them in an unordered list. So I'm going to create a section for my thumbnails. And I'm going to put an unordered list in of my images. Now, again, this probably won't look the way that we want it to. Right? Because it's going to have bullet points and all that. And that doesn't mean that you don't make it an unordered list. Right? Um, it's a list of images. I mean, that's what your thumbnails are, a list of images that you can expand. So if we want it to look a different way, we're going to do that via CSS. So I'm going to code this as an unordered list. Put the three thumbnails I'm going to just put a placeholder for the alt attribute just in the interest of time Thumbnail one, thumbnail two, thumbnail three. And then I'm going to have another section that's going to have the big picture. 
and initially when the page loads, I'm going to make the big picture to match the first thumbnail. Seems like a reasonable thing to do. So this is what we have. All right, there we have our three images for our thumbnails, and then we have the big picture. Now that doesn't look the way that we want it to, but that's okay, right? Because we can style it to look the way that we want it to. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to get rid of the dots, and then I'm going to move this image up alongside this image. All right? So. I'm going to go in, and again, I'm going to put the style right in my web page, just not because it's a better thing to do, but just in the interest of time. And I'm going to go and do a few things. I'm going to make a section for I'm going to put an ID for thumbnails. I'm going to put an ID for big picture. And I'm going to make the, both of these float to the left. I'm going to give this guy a width of 20% float left. I'm going to give the big picture a width of, let's say, 60%, and also float it left. Yes, it is. All right, so there we have that. All right, so we're getting there. I'm going to go in and I'm going to make the width of the image in big picture be 100%. All right. All right. So that made it a little bit smaller. When I say 100%, 100% of what? 100% of the available space. So this is a space for that big picture area, and it fills up 100% of it. I could also probably put a maximum width on it, so it doesn't get any bigger than a certain size. Now, we notice we have a couple problems here. There's a little bit of overlap between these, so I need to make the width of the thumbnails a little bit bigger. So we'll make the width of that, let's say, um, 25%. And 
and the width of the thumbnail 100%. So at most, it will be 100% of that 25%. All right, so we're getting there. Uh, I probably need a little bit of space between them. So I'm going to put a margin left of this guy of, let's say, 15 pixels, just to push that over a little bit. All right, well, let's push it down a little bit, too. So I'll just say margin in all directions will be 15 pixels. All right, there, that's nice and even. Now, notice by making the width 100% that um, it got rid of the problem of them being sort of jagged of them, of those middle one being smaller. Now the second one is a little bit higher and we'd have to decide if we want to change that or not. All right, because this one actually takes up a little bit of space. Um, and I probably want to get rid of the bullet point, so I'll say thumbnails UL list style type none. All right, so now we have it looking basically the way that we want it to. All right. Now, how to get the JavaScript in here. Now we can do kind of what we, what we set out to do after we did all the preliminary stuff. And I think it's important. I think it's important for me teaching this to, to sort of review the CSS and HTML and review images. But I also think it's important for you to see that all these things work together to make a web page. So now we want the interactive part. And we could do this a couple different ways. I'm going to do this starting out with a mouse over. So I'm going to say, on the thumbnail, and that's, that's the important thing to realize at first, right? Where am I going to put the mouse over event? On this guy or on the thumbnails? I'm going to put them on the thumbnails because that's what the user is going to interact with. When the user wants to change the picture, they don't put their mouse on this picture. They put their mouse on this picture. So I'm going to go in and say, on mouse over equals, all right, and between the quotes, we're going to have our JavaScript statement. Now, let's think of what we want to do. If we were coding this by hand, what would we do? If I wanted to change it from picture one to picture two, I'd change the source attribute to two.jpg, right? If I wanted to change it to image three, I'd change it to three.jpg, all right? So whatever the image I want to change it to, I want to change the source attribute. So let's think of the DOM. All right, how does the DOM work? The DOM works by us narrowing down what on the page we want to point to. All right? And we're going to need an ID here, right? Because we want to point to specifically this image. Now, in this example, you know, we have four images on the page. We can't simply say I want to change the source. I have to say to change the source of what image? Well, I want to change the source of the big picture. So I'm going to give it an ID of big. So, how do I point to the thing with an ID of big? That's our workhorse instruction, document, get element by ID. And then in parentheses, we have the word big in single quotes. Pardon me? 
Well, no, because what do I want to change? Do I want to change the sections, or do I want to change the image? I want to change the image. So the image has an ID of big, and uh, the section has an ID of big picture. Now, that's a good point. Maybe I should have named these differently, right? Uh, to make it less confusing, all right? Remember, this is going to be a statement you're going to use over and over in JavaScript. Document get element by ID. And then you're going to have something, all right? And it's going to be enclosed, in this case, it's going to be enclosed in single quotes. Why? Because this is not something in the DOM. This is a name that we created. So the name of something that we create, the ID of something we create, needs to be enclosed in quotes. Why is it enclosed in single quotes? It's enclosed in single quotes to not confuse the browser. Because if we enclosed it in double quotes, the browser's going to think the JavaScript statement goes from here to here, from quote to quote. right? So instead, we enclose this in single quotes, and the JavaScript statement goes from the double quotes to the double quotes. So we're now pointing at this big picture. All right? That's an idea of big. What do we want to change about it? We want to change the source attribute. Is the source attribute something about the HTML, or is it something about the CSS? It's about the HTML, right? So therefore, we don't put the word dot .style. And a lot of the examples we went over last week, we said document get element by ID dot style dot visible or dot style dot display or whatever. That's how you refer to something that you want to change about the style of the element. But we don't want to change the style. We want to change the HTML attribute of SRC. So we say dot SRC equals. And what do we want to change it to? Well, we want to change it to 1.jpg. We then end with a semicolon, because all JavaScript statements end with a semicolon. All right? Now, the other two are going to be the same, except the name of the image that we change it to. So the first one, we're going to change the image to 1.jpg, the second one, 2.jpg, and the third one, 3.jpg. So now we have that. We put our mouse over. It changed it to 1. Well, it was already 1, so it didn't look like anything changed. There's the second image, and there's the third image. Notice I don't do anything on, on mouse out. Why not? Well, I don't know. It doesn't really make sense to do anything on, on mouse out, right? I mean, you're still displaying the image that you last moused over, all right? So that wouldn't really make sense to reset it back to one. You know, I, I don't know. Think of the functionality. One thing I would suggest, and again, this, this applies especially to your project. But it will also apply going forward as you're developing code and developing HTML. Make sure what you do makes sense. Make sure what you, you do makes sense to a user. All right? Um, make sure your navigation makes sense. Make sure that you can take what you have code-wise and like follow it through and, and, and imagine if a user is going to do something and wants to view your gallery, how they're going to interact with the page and make sure it acts in a reasonable way. All right? So, all right, that works. So, let's save it. I'm going to make a copy of this.
and let's work on that copy. And I'm going to change it to do an on click instead of an on mouse over. How do we change this page to, to trigger the changing of the image swap from? Yes. Now, it doesn't matter if we put our mouse over it, but if we click on it, it will go and change it. Which one makes sense? I don't know. Figure it out. You know, a lot might have to do with like how many images you have uh, and so on. So, you know, do what makes sense. Put yourself in the user's shoes and imagine if you were visiting this page, what would make more sense to you? All right. Now, we talked last time about functions. All right. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to change the second page to use a function instead. What is the advantage of it? Well, it's especially valuable when you are changing uh, multiple things. All right. Uh, when you have multiple instructions. When you have one instruction, it's probably still better to use a function, but you really get the benefit when you have a bunch of instructions. Because the idea of a function is you create a set of instructions and give it a name. And then instead of having to specify each instruction, you can specify the name of the, ins uh, the, name of the function and all, and all of them get done. So for example, notice that the lions are pictures one and two, and the orangutan is picture three. I should probably change the alt attribute as well. So let's go and do that. So picture one is a picture of the lion. When I put my mouse over it, I want to change not just the source, but I want to change the alt attribute as well. So I'm going to say alt equals picture of lion. And I'll do that for two and three as well. So if we were having this with the screen reader, the alt attribute would change and, and, uh, um, and so forth. Um, granted, these kinds of interactions are difficult for people with a screen reader because they can't see to click on the item and so forth. Uh, if you could imagine, we could do the same thing. We could have, a, we could, we could have um, text here and, and the screen reader could read it. So we could expand this example, but in the interest of time, we won't. Um, but this sort of interaction would be difficult. What we could do in the case of uh, uh, this is would, would, would be to have uh, um, key shortcuts. All right. In fact, let's look up keyboard shortcuts. Um, I, I think with, with anything in web development, the things that you do a lot, you'll know, and the things that you don't do so often, you'll, you'll look up. But it doesn't mean look up everything, right? Because if you looked up everything, it would just take you way too long to get anything done. But be aware there are other things, for example, out there. So you may remember, let's say from this class, you may remember on click on mouse over, on mouse out. 
But know that, gee, there probably are other events too. What about the keyboard events? What about when you press a key? You know? Well, maybe you have to look that up to see specifically. So I would say that's the case of, of most things. Like to remember the color of, to change the color of something in CSS, background and color. Well, what about to change the bullet point from a, a um, period, you know, from a dot to a image? Well, I'd have to look that up, right? Because I don't do that all, uh, too often. I can define an access key for this. Let's see if this will work. So I could use the Alt 1, 2, or 3 to view the image. Now again, obviously for someone that's visually impaired, um, that wouldn't be terribly useful because they can't see the image anyhow. But if there was text along with the image using the Alt 1 or Alt 2 or Alt 3, you know, if we had a more extensive example that included text as well as the image, would be able to go and they would be able to read the text or have the text read to them in that manner. All right, last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to change this into a function. And a function, again, is defined in a script tag. We define, we put the word function in. We define any arguments. In this case, we define um, the things that we want to change. And I'm going to say we want to change the image source and the image all. And we need to know what the image ID is. So that's the three things we need to make this work. We need to know the, the, which image we want to change. We want to know what the source of, of it's going to be. And we want to know what the alt text is. So I want to change document get element by ID big. That part stays the same. The source is going to be whatever is in the argument image source. Not in quotes, because that's our variable. And actually, we don't need the image ID, because we're always changing big. And the alt is going to be whatever the image alt is. So now I can replace this long line of code here with just the name of our function that says on click, change image. I want to change it to one JPEG. And the alt text is going to be picture of lion.
and then I can do it to the other two as well. And if we did everything right, it should work just as it did before. So whatever argument 1 is gets put into that variable, and we change that. Whatever argument 2 is, it gets put in that variable, and we change that. And it still works. All right, what are the common JavaScript errors? One of them is just by getting the name of something wrong. This is very unforgiving. So uh, it has to be correct, and it's case sensitive. If you have an error, what do you do? Let's go and make an error on purpose. I'm going to use get element by ID. If we look under developer's tools, under council, we'll see that get element by ID is not a function. And you may think, well, yes, it is. Well, the case is wrong. It's a lowercase d. So you'd have to change it back for that to work. All right. Remember what's going to be due in the upcoming days. Remember that Wednesday is a chance for you to work on any stuff, ask me questions, and share with the other members of the class. So we'll go to lab directly on, on Monday. All right, that's all I had for today. We'll see you up in lab.